In the category of solitaire games, Free Cell is my favorite. It's one of the few solitaire games which has very little luck involved, because all the cards are visible from the start, and so it's very much a question of just figuring out the right moves to complete the game. Also, as uh, someone who grew up in the 90s, Free Cell has a big nostalgic value for me since it was included by default in every Windows installation since Windows 95. So recently, I installed a Free Cell app on my phone, but I quickly got very annoyed with the amount of advertisements. So I thought, why not make my own Free Cell app? Uh, the game is not that complicated, and it's a good exercise to learn how to make card games and how to make mobile games with Godot. In this video, I'm going to show how the game scene is set up in the Godot editor, go over key parts of the code, and explain how I built the game for Android and released it in the Google Play Store. The whole project is also available on GitHub. You can find the link in the description below. To start off, let's first have a look at the main scene uh, in the Godot editor. So you can see here that under the main node, there's a canvas layer node called board with its own board script attached. And underneath that node are basically all the UI elements that make up the game. First off, we have a simple uh, texture node, which represents the background color, which by the way is modifiable in the settings of the game. Uh, using the uh, self-modulate property on the visibility because the texture itself is just a white square. Then we have HBox containers for the top bar uh, and the bottom bar. The top bar contains statistics about the running game like the deal number, the amount of moves uh, that have been played and the time that has progressed since the start of the deal uh, and an undo button. And then the bottom bar contains a settings button, a stats pop-up, and a deal button to start a new game. The board of the game itself is composed of um, three HBox containers, one for the free cells in the top left, one for the foundation cells in the top right, and one for uh, what is called the tableau cells, which is the main area of the game where all the cascades of cards are. Also, I got a control node containing the menus, a control node containing the pop-ups that uh, are necessary for the game, and then a node uh, with a game timer. Next to the main scene, there's a card scene that gets instantiated for every card on the board. The main node of the card scene is a button which has a card script attached for handling card movement, and it has a sprite to the child node with a script attached that handles selecting the correct card sprite from a sprite sheet. The card sprites come from a free card asset pack by Nato Marcassini on itch.io. You can find a link to the asset in the description below. So to dive into the scripts of the game, let's start by simply seeing how a new game is dealt. For that, we'll take a look at the deal script. Now the deal script has different functionalities because in the deal menu, there's multiple options the player can choose. You can choose a completely random deal, you can choose to enter deal numbers to deal a custom deal based on a certain seed. And you can choose to uh, redeal the actual deal you were in. Or you can play the challenge mode, which follows a predefined path with uh, deals ranging from easy to hard as you continue uh, winning games. The deal algorithm itself is the same one as is used in Windows Free Cell. It's a pseudo-random algorithm that generates a deal based on a seed or a deal number. Due to the popularity of Windows Free Cell, these deal numbers have become widely used by people uh, to share games. And that's why I implemented the same algorithm. At the core of the algorithm is a pseudo-random number generator, which gets fed the seed to generate a sequence of pseudo-random numbers. By doing a module operation with the number of cards left to deal, we get the number of the next card we need to deal. Initially, our deck is sorted from aces to kings, and whenever we deal a card, uh, we move the last card in the deck to the spot of the card we just dealt. I assume this was done for performance reasons, to not have to shift uh, over all the following cards one position. The first card is dealt to the leftmost tableau cell, and we shift right after every card dealt, and we wrap back to the leftmost cell after we dealt the card to the rightmost cell. We continue this until all the cards in the deck are dealt. As you can already see here, we instantiate the instance of a card scene for every card we deal. The card scene handles the main logic for moving the cards around. 
It's an extension of button, so we can make use of the on button up and on button down. But this is not strictly necessary. You could just as well extend this from any other node and use the on input event to handle the mouse action. In the on button down function, we save the current card position. So we know where to restore the card if the player releases the card in an illegal location. We also set the Z index of the cards to a high number so that we're sure that while dragging, the card will always be in front of other cards on the board. If the card is part of a sequence or cascade and so has other cards below it, it will have a child card registered which, by the way, isn't uh, a child in the hierarchy. So sorry for this confusing variable name. So we call the start dragging function on that child card to allow the player to drag the whole sequence at once. While dragging, we add the movement of the mouse cursor to the position of the cards and its children so that they follow the mouse. And then on button up, we call a function in the board script that tells us which cell or cards are currently over and we check if the card is allowed on that cell. Checking if a card is allowed in a cell depends on the type of cell. For a free cell, a card is allowed if the cell is empty and the card we're dragging doesn't have any cards below it. For a foundation cell, the card is allowed if the cell is empty and the card is an ace or if the card is the same suit as the cards on the foundation pile and the rank of the new card is exactly one bigger than the top card of the pile. And for a tableau cell, the card is allowed if the card and its children form an allowed sequence, which means alternating colors and ranks counting down. And if there's enough free cells to move the skate of that size, and if the target cell is either empty or the last card is a different color and exactly one rank higher than the cards being dragged on top. Now, if after all of this, the card is not allowed in the cell, then it's reverted back to its original position. If it is allowed in the cell, then the card and its children get removed from the cell they were in and added to the target cell. The target cell add card function also makes sure the new cards are positioned correctly and any card's child references are correctly updated. After every move of cards to a foundation cell, there's also a check to verify whether the game is successfully completed. On button up, there's also a double click check. In case the card was double clicked, we check if it can move to one of the foundation piles and if not, if it can move to one of the free cells. Whenever the card is moved, a card moved signal is emitted. In the board script, the signal is picked up to update a move counter and check if some cards can be auto moved to the foundation. There are four autocomplete settings. Each of these modes have their own checks and moving logic, which I won't explain in detail here. If you're interested, you can check out the code on GitHub. There's also a player profile class, which extends the resource class that contains player stats and player settings and logic to save and load it to a file. For a mobile game, make sure your file path starts with user colon slash slash. This defaults to a writable user settings directory for your app on the mobile device. Otherwise, you will have issues with read-write privileges. I wrote the game timer class to keep track of the elapsed time on the running game. It uses the time.getTixMilliseconds function to track time and uses the notification function to detect when the application loses or gains focus to pause or unpause the timer. When it comes to the controls of the game, no specific changes are needed for mobile. All interactions with the game are through the mouse and all mouse controls automatically work as touch controls on mobile. When it comes to building the game for mobile, I only have experience with Androids. First of all, I don't... <laughs> First of all, I don't own any Apple devices to test. And secondly, to release an app in the App Store, you need an Apple developer account, which costs $100 per year as opposed to the Google Play Store, where a Google developer account only has a one-time $25 registration fee. I'm going to go over some of the details of the Android build configuration because it could save you uh, a lot of time not having to figure it all out yourself. To be able to make an Android build, you need to install the Android export template in Godot. You also need the Android SDK library somewhere on your PC and have Android build tools and the correct version of the Java SDK installed. The easiest way to do most of this is to install Android Studio 
or you can get libraries on their own separately, but then you'll have a little more manual work to correctly register them in your path and make sure that you have the right versions of every package and library. In the editor settings, under export Android, set the path to the editor SDK you installed and to the debug key store, which got automatically generated when you installed the Android SDK. This should be in some Android user directory, the path of which depends on your operating system. To make a test build of the game, go to project export, make sure use gradle build is not checked and format is set to apk. By clicking export project, a .apk file will be generated. You can copy this straight to your phone and run it to install the game. However, you first might need to go into the security settings of your phone to enable installation of unknown apps. Whenever an APK file is run directly, there is a warning that it might be unsafe. So while this is a quick way to test the game, it's not a good idea to just spread an APK file around to distribute your game. To publish a game to the Play Store, you need to build a signed app bundle. To do this, you need to generate a proper key store. The Godot docs explain how to do this in the exporting for Android page. You can find a link to that page in the description. Then in project export, you need to check use Gradle build, choose export format AAB and link your created key store in the key store release path. Fill in the alias and the password you chose when creating the key store. Make sure the signed checkbox is checked under package and click export project. In the save pop-up, make sure export with debug is not checked. Otherwise you'll get an error when uploading to the Play Store. When you click save, Godot will install the Gradle package and build your app bundle. This is the point where you might get cryptic errors if your, your versions of Java, Android SDK and Gradle aren't aligned. In my case, for Godot 4.2, I needed Java SDK 17, Android Build Tools 33.0.2 and Android Platforms 33. To publish games to the Google Play Store, you need a Google Developer account, which has a one-time $25 registration fee. In the Play Store Developer Console, you can create a new application and add tags, descriptions and screenshots of the game for the Play Store page. Then you can have fun filling out an elaborate set of questionnaires and writing a privacy policy. When all of that is done, you can create a new release in the Releases Overview section, upload your signed app bundle and submit it for approval. And then we wait. A few days later, our app is approved. In the description below, you can find a link to the app in the Play Store. The game is far from perfect at this point, but it works. If you have any questions or comments on making card games and or mobile games with Godot and publishing them, let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video interesting. I might make similar ones in the future about the projects I'm working on. And you can also check out my Twitch channel in the description below.